Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've got a Fluke 189 True RMS Multimeter. Now this one wasn't specifically mentioned as being faulty, it possibly had an issue, whatever that's meant to mean. And if I just turn it on, you will see, I hope you can see that, that it does actually show something on the LCD there. You've got a bit of the bar graph and manual written in the corner there. And no matter what I do, no matter which setting I go to, it just comes up with the same thing. And it doesn't matter if I just wiggle around the selector switch, it just says the same thing on the LCD. And also it doesn't matter what I do with any of the buttons, exactly the same thing. Now it never used to do that. Um, five minutes ago, prior to filming, I just switched it on to see what would happen and it did actually work. And I was actually able to put in a voltage and it read correctly on the LCD. But then it flickered around a little bit and I thought, well, maybe the batteries have got an issue. So let's open it up and let's see if we can try and affect the repair. So let's open up the battery compartment and let's take a look inside. And there we go, and I've got four fresh batteries in there and some nicely cleaned up contacts and all eight of the contacts there. So let me put my multimeter across the two ends there, that all the batteries are in series and let's see what voltage I'm getting out of those batteries. Right, I think this is the most positive one over at this side up here and this one here is the most negative so let's just go on to there and on to there and see what I'm getting 6 volts perfect for 1.5 volt cells let's open it up Well, there we are inside the unit anyway, in the back, and it is a little bit dirty around here. Uh, looks like there's been some sort of spillage, perhaps on the front here at some point, and it's gotten right through to the back side of that PCB there, where the uh, input sockets are. So I will need to clean that up. The fuses are intact, but the rest of the board looks quite clean actually. There's a couple of more screws to actually take the circuit board out which I'll do now and you can see up the top end of the board there looks to be some power supply stuff up here, transformer, a few tantalum capacitors and what I think is probably a super cap possibly for um, memory backup and a small ribbon cable here. Uh, I think that probably goes away off to the backlight. So let's take out a couple of screws and let's lift the board out. And here we go, and that's it, turn it over, and there we have the circuit board itself, the top side, and it looks fairly clean, you can see the input protection here, the bridge rectifier, uh, resistors, MOVs, etc, and the top side of that uh, selection switch there you can see that it's actually pretty worn actually I will need to clean that up a little bit um, doesn't look like there's any gaps or anything like that or any problem you've got this resistor network here and the LCD up the top here so, so far nothing jumping out at me so let's take a look at the selector switch itself, the spring contacts there, they don't look too bad certainly not bent or anything like that but I will just clean up the tips of them so that uh, just in case there's any sort of uh, uh, oxidization or anything like that on there but they don't look too bad actually. Now one small thing uh, where the plastics here come up onto this standoff here it is a little bit broken, I can see the little chips of the plastic there. I don't think that's going to cause a problem. It's not like it's uh, causing this switch mechanism there to drop down or anything like that. 
it's just a little washer on the top I think it's just actually yeah it's breaking away there yeah I don't think that's going to cause a problem well, like I said the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very very lightly just use my fiberglass pen just to bring back the tips of those contacts back to life and as I am rubbing them actually it is making a little bit of a difference there uh, yeah and I might just bend them up slightly as well this is one over here it does look like it's bent slightly down so I will do something about that yeah that innermost one there definitely looks like it's got a problem let's see if I can do that now in fact I think I've got a problem this two here just seem to be sitting rather loose uh, whereas this two here are much more settled in their uh, uh, position let me zoom in on that and show you you can see this good one here it's actually quite settled in its socket there so it's got a little clip at the back there which seems to hold it in place you can see I can sort of maneuver it around a little bit um, and the same with this one here but this one here has actually come away at this far end here and this one here has jumped out altogether so let me see if I can put it back into position and clip it back into place There we go. Not sure if that was me just cleaning up the contacts that did that. And onto the board. I will just use my fiberglass pen very, very lightly just to take that top layer of oxidization there off. And it is brightening up very, very slightly there. There we go, I think that'll do. And even in between the tracks where the uh, contacts make contact with the actual silk screen of the PCB, I am just giving that a rub as well, just to pull any oxidization that may have come off of the tracks, especially the end there. it goes off the end of the track and I think that'll do now we'll use a little bit of IPA now just to take off the residue You can see there the dirt that's on my Q-tip there. And a second go. There, nicely cleaned up. And whilst I'm at it, a little bit of IPA on the actual contacts as well. And whilst I'm here, I'm just cleaning up the residue on the back side of this PCB here. It isn't quite a state, really. Get the most of it off with my Q-tip here. You can see that there, yeah. No, I think actually it's not water damage. I think it's just dirt getting down through the cavities to where the uh, fuse access is. And it's just sort of spread around each side. 
around the, the fuses there. Yep, I think that'll do. But one thing I've noticed whilst I'm in here, let me zoom in, I think I've found another problem. So these are the backs of the four front panel sockets there, nicely soldered. But look at this one here, it's not been soldered or as badly soldered. So I think, I'm, and this one here is a little bit the same. So I'm going to go and reflow all eight of those pins there that just go into the backs of the actual sockets there. I think it's a nickel plating on those pins there. They're not really uh, easy to actually get a nice reflow on. It's probably why they're a little bit dry soldered there. And just to persevere with the soldering iron just a little bit more than normal and they will actually reflow. Uh, just before I put it back together, I'm just taking another look at this washer here, or this bracket here, with a built-in washer. It doesn't look to be too bad, actually. It's just this um, far edge here that looks to be broken. Uh, I don't think it's going to cause a problem. You've still got the majority of it around this side here, which is nicely sitting on that sand off there. So I think it will clamp down, uh, no problem, onto the PCB here. So I don't think there'll be a problem. So I'll put it back together. And because it's easy, I'll just put the screws back in. Now looking at the inside of the actual housing itself, you can see the battery compartment there or the back of it and you've got these contacts here coming down, that'll be the positive and negative from the batteries and they're coming down onto these two contacts here on the actual PCB, so I'm going to give them a clean up also. And the actual contacts themselves as well. And again, a little bit of IPA. Okay, so let me go and put it back together, just without the screws, and let's see if it makes any difference. Okay, I've got a tight hand round it, because I haven't put the four screws in yet, so let me switch it on. <laughs> yes! Wow! So let me just give it a little bit of a flex, a little bit of a tap, yes, I think that's what was wrong, I think the range selection switch was just a little bit dirty. So let me put the screws back in on the back and let's give it a test. Okay, that's it back together again, so let me hook up my PDVS2 Mini, a couple of short leads here. Now let's switch it on to volts, and give it one volt. <laughs> yes, perfect. So I've no doubt the rest of the ranges will work on the meter. I will give it a test as much as I can. And yes, the back lighting's working as well. So I've got no doubt the meter's working now. Just bad contacts, I think, on the back of that uh, range selector switch there. So thanks for watching and remember you can comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.